Welcome to Thriller Recaps. Today, I am explaining the movie. Escape from Pretoria, explaining every scene as it happens. Watch till the end, and please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy this. Police officers are shooting black children and adults in the streets, with people running helter-skelter. The maltreatment intensifies day by day, with black people getting beaten and injured on the streets because of the color of their skin, while people of other colors enjoy their lives. Soon, protests for an end to segregation and maltreatment begin. Two white men, Timothy and Stephen, join the Forbidden African National Congress. They strategically drop bags containing documents scattered everywhere with the help of a small bomb. They fight for the equality of all races. However, when police officers arrive at the scene, Tim and Stephen try to leave but are arrested. Tim's lover, a black lady, sneaks into the room where Tim is held and gives him money, urging him to hide it well from the officers. She tells him to be strong before leaving. Tim puts the money in a tiny iron container and inserts it into his anus. In Cape Town, June 1978, the court session begins, and the judge discusses the items found in possession of Stephen and Tim, including typewriters used to advocate for equal treatment of all races. The judge notes that the parents of the two men are notable people, one a renowned pharmacologist, and the other a notable scholar in the humanities. He accuses them of betraying South Africa, which raised and provided for them. As punishment, Tim is sentenced to 12 years in prison, and Stephen to 8 years. Stephen attempts to escape from a waiting room but is caught by an officer. Both men are then transported to Pretoria Prison, where a senior officer informs them that they must pay for what they did, as there are consequences for their actions. They are searched thoroughly and given rules and regulations, no pen or book, no foreign object, no radio, visitation once a month, no sexual relationships with others. After the search, they are taken through different paths in the prison, heavily guarded with metal gates until they make it to their individual cells. They are put in cells beside one another, and the guard tells them they're to wake up by 5 a.m. and lights out is by 11 p.m. Day one in prison, the prisoners are made to walk on a straight line outside. Stephen jokes about not minding being in prison for the duration of his sentence. During breakfast, a man leads Tim to a table as he looks around for one and is about to sit with some other men. The man tells Tim that those other men are in prison for murder. That's why the color of their shirts is different. Stephen soon joins them, and they watch as an officer beats a black prisoner. Outside during their exercise hour, Stephen and Tim are joking when the man Dennis approaches them and tells them it's noticeable that they have things in their anus with how they're walking. He tells them they have to remove it, and he has a safe place for them to keep it. He tells them not to try to escape, as they should all be prisoners of conscience. Another man named Leonard approaches them, telling them not to mind what Dennis said about being prisoners of conscience, so if they have a plan to escape the prison, they should let him know. Dennis helps them keep the money in a safe place. Day 23, Tim stares at the door, trying to use fire to maneuver the lock. He stops when he hears the sound of an officer approaching. Days pass, with Tim trying to think of ways he can go about picking the lock. One day, an idea finally comes to him. He uses paper to measure the length and width of the lock so he can make a key from wood. He and Stephen tell Leonard about an escape plan, explaining they plan on making a key from wood. Leonard asks how they plan on getting wood and they tell him they can get some from the wood workshop. While eating, Tim and Stephen create a distraction by pouring food on the floor loudly, causing an officer to approach them. Tim stares at the key just as Leonard asked him to, so he knows what kind of key to make. Tim starts to sketch the key on papers and doesn't miss an opportunity to stare at the key any chance he gets. He continues to make several copies of the sketch until he's sure he has the right one. Day 74, Tim steals small wood pieces, and an officer finds him suspicious but Stephen creates a distraction. Tim hides the wood pieces inside the flask given to all prisoners. The officer pours out all the tea in Tim's flask but doesn't find anything. Inside his cell, Tim makes the key and tries it. It starts to work at first before getting jammed. The key eventually opens the door, and Tim is bummed as he forgot there is another door. He tells Stephen and Leonard while they are eating, and the accomplice tells them all they need to do now is make a complex key for the other door. Tim starts to stare at the keys the officers carry around so he knows what the key he wants to make looks like. Day 100. After making a key he thinks will work for the other door, Tim tries the key on the door while Leonard and some other prisoners stand on guard. The key opens the door but is unable to close it. He starts to panic as an officer approaches them. In his haste, a part of the key breaks inside the keyhole. The officer makes it there but doesn't stay long. Tim uses his hand to hit the lock continuously to push it back inside, but it doesn't work. The officer on guard makes it to the door and finds the lock outside. Tim is scared in his cell of what might happen, but the officer just locks it and leaves. On visitation day, 
Tim waits for his parents, but they don't show up. Leonard's son makes it to see his father, and he tells his father he beat a boy in school for calling him a bastard. He asks his father if he was angry with him, and he tells him he isn't. He tries to touch his son through the glass, but an officer interrupts, scaring the boy and ending the session earlier than the time given. Day 142. While exercising outside, the three men continue to discuss how to use the key since it can be opened only from outside. Leonard gives them an idea, but Tim tells him and Stephen it won't work. They continue to discuss, and the stern officer that has been on their tail, Manir, overhears some of their conversation until Leonard sees him and ends the conversation. Manir asks them what they were talking about, and they tell him nothing, as they were only cleaning the cells. While they are talking, an idea comes to Stephen's mind while watching Leonard holding the long wooden broom. He and Tim quickly check the length of the window in the cell to the keyhole. It doesn't make it all the way, so Tim decides they will need something to make it get there and turn the key. He steals little wood from the wood workshop and attaches a customized piece he made to the wooden broomstick. At night, he tries the key by sitting by his window and stretching the key through the window to the keyhole. He is successful in using it to open the door, but he notices a guard looking at him through the other window in the cell. He stylishly attempts to remove the key, and when he does, a part of it breaks and falls on the ground. He quickly chews a gun and tries to attach it to the stick to pick it up, but it falls again. He finally picks it up and rushes to his bed. The next day, he tells Stephen and Leonard that he was able to open the door. While outside, Stephen and Tim pretend they are gardening, but instead, they bury their remaining wood pieces. Manir approaches Stephen first, then Tim, to ask them what they were doing, and they lie they were gardening. Dennis tells Tim to be careful and to think about the snipers because he will be lucky to be given 25 extra years than a bullet in his head. At night, Tim opens the two doors in his cell and another gate leading outside. After opening the third gate, he goes back, realizing there are more gates to be opened. The next day, while the prisoners are cleaning their bathroom, Tim tells them, also saying they need patience. Another prisoner tells them they need more things like clothes to wear outside, how to get out of the country, and some other things. Leonard tells them he doesn't have the patience anymore, so they must fight back. The argument is on the verge of escalating when Dennis butts in and lets them know they are all on the same side. Day 206, they are building a structure in the prison while still thinking of ways to get the things they need. They start to use the cracks in their routine, and with the help of the black cleaners, they start to ask for clothes, newspapers, and some other things. Day 296, Tim asks a prisoner who is in charge of a key what time the key is given to him so he can study the key to make a copy. At night, Manir brings Tim his new glasses and tells him that the black man who works in the prison was caught stealing and has been punished severely. Tim stares at the picture of his lover and puts a disguise on his bed. He and Leonard open their cell doors and make their way through some other gates. They use the fact that the night guard plays music so they use it to their advantage to drown out noise. They get stuck at some point when a key jams. The guard makes his way upstairs for routine inspection. Tim and Leonard make it to a room to hide where they are breathing hard from fear of getting caught. Once the man makes his way upstairs, they sneak back out so they can avoid getting seen by him. Tim and Leonard make it to the guard room and try the key on the gate there. The key works, and they are about to go further when they hear the guard. The guard makes it to the cells and checks through the window to make sure every prisoner is in bed. Thankfully, the disguise Tim and Leonard put in place is convincing enough, so he doesn't suspect anything. Stephen is sweating profusely in his cell room in fear of Tim and Leonard getting caught. The guard starts to make his way back and once Tim and Leonard hear his sounds on the stairs, they start to close the doors they left open. Tim is unable to close the last door. Leonard grabs him in fear of getting caught, and they go back to the room they ran into earlier. Tim's legs are shaking badly from fear where they are hiding. The guard sees drops of water on the floor, which unknown to him is the sweat of one of the men. Once the guard goes back to his room, they make it back to their cells immediately. The next day, Tim doesn't wake up after the sound of the bell and is woken up by Manir and the captain. The captain tells him that with twenty years' experience with prisoners, the only thing that could have made him wake up late is that he was tired from not sleeping all night. He asks him what he was doing and tells him his punishment is no food in the afternoon and night. Tim tells the captain he is sorry for not waking up at the sound of the bell. The rooms of the prisoners get searched, and Leonard is dragged away by some officers he attacked for wanting to tear the picture of his son. Tim is called into his room by the captain who tells him he doesn't know why he keeps pictures of black people who can't help him. During the search, he sees a piece of wood and asks him what it is. Tim quickly comes up with a lie and tells the captain he uses it to hold up the picture of his parents. The captain tells him he knows he is up to something and he will find out what it is. He asks him to clean up the cell, and the search ends. Tim's nightly panic attacks increase and become more vicious. 
he starts to use other places in the prison as hiding places for the keys he made and some other things. Some of the hiding places include soap buckets containing powder soaps, bookcases, cracks in the wall. Tim, Stephen, and the accomplice continue to go out of their cells at night so they can continue to study the locks to make more keys. Day 404, Tim sees a dentist for a decay in his tooth. The dentist tells him he needs to come to her clinic for surgery to get the tooth out. Manir is not happy Tim will leave the prison walls for the surgery but has no choice. While going out, Tim listens as Manir asks a guard named Loki to push a button to open the electric door. Once outside about to enter the truck, Tim stares at the outside wall, studying it to increase his knowledge on how to escape. Once back, Tim tells some prisoners of the plan that they have made 35 keys for 15 doors in the past months and for them to join them in their escape. The other prisoners, including Dennis, make the decision not to leave for the fear of getting caught. In the afternoon, the captain makes it to Tim's cell to search, and before he enters, Tim sees the tube Dennis used to hide his money on his bed and prays the captain and Manir don't find out what is inside it. In the evening when all the officers leave, remaining only the guard, Tim uses a wooden object he made to send the prison layout to Stephen's cell beside his cell. Stephen knocks on their shared wall to let Tim know he understands the map. Tim opens his room door and goes on to open that of Stephen and Leonard. Tim asks Dennis one last time if he is sure of his decision, and he tells him he is sure he is not leaving, but he should make sure he gets clear and not caught. The guard on duty has a runny stomach, so he goes to use the toilet. Tim, Stephen, and Leonard go to their hiding place for clothes so they can dress up as they are in only briefs. The guard leaves the toilet without bothering to flush and goes back to his duty room. Tim, Stephen, and Leonard make their way through several other doors using the keys Tim made. The guard goes to the film room for something and sees a metal pin on the door. He starts to wonder what it is but just takes the toilet plunger and leaves. Tim, Stephen, and Leonard make it to the film room to hide, with the guard on his way back to the film room to return the plunger. As if sensing they might get into trouble, Dennis breaks his light bulb and starts to scream for Manir. The guard has no choice but to go upstairs to find out the issue. Tim, Stephen, and Leonard quickly make their way through the remaining doors till the last door to get outside. They look through a hole as they see the street outside and happily rejoice as the only thing they need to do now is bypass the guards watching the premises. They try the keys with them, but they don't open the door and keep breaking. Once they try the last one and it still breaks, they start to panic. Leonard, sure he doesn't want to go back after getting this close, starts to break the door lock and is successful in breaking it. The time to open the door comes, and they are all scared to do it until Leonard pushes it open. After making sure they have packed the broken wood in the ground and their clothes in place on their bodies, they make their way out. Leonard starts to walk without a care until Stephen grabs him as the patrolling guard almost sees him. They use a mirror to see the reflection of the guard and make their way out to the gate as he turns. They walk out of the gate like normal people and walk, avoiding officers they recognized. They make it to a cab with a black driver, and Tim gives him money to drive them. The driver agrees after seeing the money they are offering. The next day, Manir goes to their rooms and finds it empty, Dennis and the prisoners who knew laugh as he starts to run to find them. They laugh at him knowing they were long gone. Tim, Stephen, and Leonard make it to Mozambique and then Tanzania before going to London where they joined the struggle against apartheid. In 1991, they were pardoned, and Dennis is released in 1985 after 22 years. He reunites with his wife and sons. Tim's girlfriend Daphne was arrested after his escape for nine days, and Tim never saw her again. In 1992, the global struggle against injustice and oppression led to the fall of apartheid. In 1994, Nelson Mandela, the leader of the ANC, was elected the president of South Africa. Subscribe for more daily videos. Your support, likes, shares, and subscriptions mean a lot. See you in the next video.